Welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I am your host and sober coach, Courtney Anderson. You are listening to episode 147. Before I go any further, today is National Motherfucking Sober Day. That's right. It's September 14th. And that means it's a national holiday that I founded back in 2019. This holiday is for everybody. Yes, absolutely. You should celebrate every day that you are sober. And I'm a firm believer of that. But in creating this day that I did back in 2019, it was just for added awareness to the terrible disease of addiction and then awareness to sobriety and recovery to show other people that there is so much more life to live in sobriety and recovery and to normalize it and for other people to support you along your journey that living a day without um, alcohol and drugs is hard for a lot of people, right? So party your little heart out today, do a little dance, right? (laughs) Do a little shoulder shake. If you post on social media, make sure you use hashtag National Sober Day. And of course, tag me. I love reading through those year after year. And share your story if you feel inclined, even if it's just a beautiful picture of yourself in your sober life, you know, hashtag National Sober Day. And then put, I am motherfucking sober. So celebrate today. I know I said this last year and I've had some people ask. I did not do anything for National Sober Day this year because of the book. And I am a really big believer of not overwhelming yourself in life. (laughs) And with the book launch and National Sober Day being so close together, it's only, you know, tomorrow, the 15th, it will be one month since my book came out. I just, it was too much. And then being dictated by a two-year-old, it's a lot. So I held off this year on doing anything, but next year, I promise, and I know I said this for the past couple of years, but I really, I promise next year, we're going to throw a fucking rager in Detroit and I want everyone to fly in. (laughs) you can and we'll make a bash of it plus two next year it's on a friday so i think that will just make it a lot better especially if you come in from out of town you can stay in detroit for the weekend and really soak up what the motor city has to offer i have plenty of suggestions i will tell you where to go and like what to do like the motown museum go and see that the list goes on And to you coming into Pure Michigan in September, it's one of the, it's the most beautiful time of year here. So I'm not an asshole and having you fly in mid-February when it's the pits of hell with this winter. You guys know I'm all about that vitamin D and that sun. So, you know, you can even take up a Tigers game. If they're still play, if they still play baseball during that time, if it's not uh, playoffs, which I don't think that happens till October, so you can catch game. There's lots to do in the Motor City and just have a ball, you know. So I am going to start getting that planned starting in January because I do want to have a rager and have fun with it, and you know, dance. I'll be fucking dancing that evening of National Sober Day in 2024. All right. So today we're going to, I'm going to follow up last week, episode 146. I talked about the dilemma of moderation drinking, right? And after I got done recording that, like a day or two after, I was like, oh, I, th- I wanted to say more, right? But I didn't say it because I didn't even think about it until afterwards, because a lot of these solo episodes, if you are new here, a lot of the solo episodes, I go based it off of kind of what's on my heart, and I shoot for it from the hip, because I believe more in casual conversations than the shit always being so fucking scripted. So afterwards, I was like, should I air that? I was like, no, I'm going to air it, right? I'll just do a part two. So this is part two. If you haven't listened to episode 146, go back. You know, obviously, if you're listening to it in real time and you've already listened to it, then you are here for part two. I want to explain something, too, about the moderation. I just want to paint a story for you. Back in 2012, I quit drinking alcohol. 
But for four years previous, okay, four years prior to that, when I was 25, that's when I knew one day I was going to have to live life without alcohol. Back then, doing air quotation marks, if you can see me. Back then, there wasn't words, there wasn't the phrase of, you know, gray area drinking, moderation drinking, there wasn't these terms. But what I was doing was I was trying my goddamn damnedest to continue to keep alcohol in my life for four years. And to me, that was a moderation, trying to moderate my drinking and putting all of these rules and stipulations on it. Cause that's what moderation drinking is. If you've already had a problem, I said in an episode 146, I don't believe that people, I believe people who already have drinking problems, there's no going back to this, you know, little crush that you once had with alcohol it, there. It, Cause it, If it does start off that way, it will eventually go back to where you eventually stopped in the first place. So for four years, I tried to make it all work and fit together. And it it always continued to lead me back. Sure, I could go a couple weeks without drinking and fucking give myself a high five and a pat on the back and be like, see, I don't have a problem. I could cut down, stop drinking Jägermeister. Oh, God. Disgusting. I like, I can taste the Jaeger currently, as I just said that, like in the back of my mouth and it's making me like drool. Sure. I'll let me eliminate cherry bombs. I feel like I'm aging myself here, but let me eliminate cherry bombs. Let me only drink wine tonight. You know, God, let me not crush IPAs. Let me stop with the two hearteds because that will really fuck you up. Make sure you eat. If you've been listening to the show, you have heard me say this time and time again. And so I would do all the things, but then eventually it would just be like, oh, okay, no, because I didn't have any boundaries with myself because you can't have any boundaries with yourself when you already have an issue with alcohol, when it has already taken over in your brain and your chemistry changes and it becomes a problem. And you are either an alcoholic or alcohol use disorder, which is now, you know, the umbrella of all the problem drinking underneath it, right? It's a spectrum now. So if you are a person who suffers with this issue and have the problematic relationship with it, there is no rewinding time. There is no, just like I said, going back to this innocent crush with alcohol. And in that moderation drinking, if you go back to it, right, you will just eventually find yourself exhausted. And I wanted to say this, and which I did not say, is the reason why you feel so good in the changes that you have made in your life to get you to a point to be like, oh, could I go back to drinking and just handling it? It's because you gave up alcohol. If you didn't give up alcohol in the first place, then you would have never made these changes. So I really want, you know, if you're sitting there being like, should I moderate? Should I moderate? Can I go back to just having one? I want you to think about that after you've had had a couple months or a couple years with alcohol. There is a re- like, there is a reason your life has changed and progressed the way it has, and you have progressed as a person, and maybe some of your relationships have progressed, and maybe there's some really fucking creative ideas you've come out of having sobriety. Because you gave up something that was holding you back. So why would you reintroduce that into your life? And I have to say that too. If that thought is coming back up for you, there is more work to be done. And this is where you have to check the ego of and to the, it's almost like you have to get over your goddamn self. Like, it's okay if you have a problem. Millions do, right? You got to get over it at some point. And that is really where you do have to dig deeper and do more work. I said on last week's episode, those thoughts have come up for me through the years. I said it like, well, I got out of the restaurant industry and I took myself out of that equation. And yeah, a lot of my drinking and problem was formed under that, you know, kind of tent 
of like being in the service industry and there's lots of partying going on. But just because I got, I removed myself from it, just because I removed myself from one situation doesn't mean that problem left me. Because what we have to understand is when you have an issue with alcohol, it does not forever leave leave you. It doesn't. So that is where you have to keep remembering and digging back into helping yourself. This is where it's very, like, to not get stagnant in your sobriety and getting so, like, confident within your, I want you to be confident. So this is where this kind of sounds like a little fucked up, but I just always want you to be aware that if you allow that bitch back into your life of what can happen to you and where it can take you and to stop starting over and because it's just so exhausting. And for some people who go back to it, they don't get out of it. They do not make it out of it. So if you have three years four years, five years, you have six months, keep going. Your life is as good as it is. It's because you made one single choice to remove a substance. But if you need to burn your hand a couple times, burn your hand a couple times, because that is your lesson to learn. I am just here to walk you through it and coach you through it because this is the type of coaching I believe in to show you that and to to guide you through that you know I want to share with you today about a new product that I love sober vibes and exact nature have a shared mission helping you get sober and thrive exact nature's healthy all natural CBD products can help they're made for changes in mood focus, cravings, and sleep that can be a part of getting sober. Founded by a father and son, both in addiction recovery, they know these challenges firsthand and have created a line of products to amplify the hope in your journey. Exact Nature offers oils, soft gels, gummies, and creams, detox for cravings, serenity for calm and focus, and Z's for better sleep. There are thousands of CBD products on the market, but only exact natures are made for those of us in recovery. I'm a big fan of the serenity. For 20% off your order, use code SV20 for 20% off your order at exactnature.com. That is E-X-A-C-T-N-A-T-U-R-E.com. The link will also be in the show notes below. You can use that code now and all year long. It's time to start feeling your best self and you can learn more at exactnature.com. Again, the link is in the show notes. I strongly recommend CBD to help you along your sobriety and recovery journey. Exact Nature now offers free shipping on all orders. Hey, I would love to share with you something that I think could work great for you. Imagine you just got sober. You're working your program, checking in with a recovery sober coach, checking in with your sponsor, maintaining your employment and thriving. Now imagine none of your closest friends or family believe you. And this is why I'm sharing this because early on in my sobriety, there was a couple of times Matt didn't believe that I was sober. So much trust is lost during active addiction, and it can be hard to convince loved ones that things are different, that you're different. This is where Soberlink can help. Soberlink's remote alcohol monitoring system is designed to help you sustain a sober lifestyle while rebuilding trust with loved ones. Small enough to fit in your purse or pocket and discreet enough to use in public. Soberlink devices combine facial recognition, tamper detection, and real-time results. So friends and family know instantly that you're sober and working towards your recovery goals. As a sober coach, I really can't think of a better tool to maintain accountability, strengthen community, improve sobriety to loved ones. Now, you might be thinking like, do I really need this? And honestly, it's different for everybody. I know quite a few people who have had to use this or something like this to prove to their spouses and or family members that they are sober. 
this does not just affect the person who is the drinker. I mean, a lot of damage happens during your active addiction and accountability needs to take place. And with this tool, you can show that. Let's make 2023 a memorable one. Please visit www.soberlink.com forward slash sober dash vibes to sign up and receive $50 off your device. The link is in the show notes. Check it out. If you do get this device, please feel free to reach out and let me know how it has helped you in your sober journey. So just the moderation drinking, it's not worth it. It's really not because that's why I said, if you're thinking about it, and where it's still important for you to have that in your life, then there's more work you need to do throughout the process of your sobriety. And that might even, where you're at right now, that might not even, you might not need to go to AA, right? You might not need a sober coach, but you might need a therapist to help you with some underlining issues that you have not healed from some trauma from your past. You might need to let's just say a life coach. Okay. Maybe go to a life coach. If there's other things you need to, if you need some motivation for a new goal, if you're stuck in a funk, that can be one too. If you're stuck in a funk and the being stuck in a funk can actually bring up thoughts of drinking. And I, and that has for sure happened to me as well. I'm not saying that you know the difference between like depression and funk, right? Where you're just in one of those moods where you're like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> I had that when I was 35, when I turned five and then I was 35, I was like, this is odd. So that's where more work needs to be done. Digging into some personal development. Stop reading all the quit books. Stop listening to some out the stop listening to Sober Vibes podcast and all the other alcohol podcasts out there of sobriety and recovery and start digging into, you know, something else. So this is not what you're absorbing all the time. Okay. Because there's more to life than just constantly focusing on this plus two when you get into your sober life you're like a new little baby bird you're this new little newborn in a 50 year old's body and you're like what the fuck so you really have to develop this new person and that can help you keep going and plus two with some identity work of shifting the identity of okay I'm no longer where I was five years ago. That's where I'm saying of like, why are you still holding on to the fact of if you want to fit alcohol in your life work, what work did you do in those past five years where it's still like the thought of that, especially I want to say that if it's coming up constantly, not like one or two thoughts a year, normal, you really have to decide like the thought process of what's normal and of thinking of, yeah, you're a human being. Of course you would think like this or what's like too much thinking where you're ready to make that plunge. So think about it. If you are in this process, I know I bring up moderation drinking. I kind of bring it up a lot. I feel like I keep hitting this topic in some way. It might not be the title, like the dilemma of moderation drinking, but I've touched on this a few times. I know there was one, it's, you know, what are you get? There was one, I think it was in season three, but it's kind of the similar tone, but that's where it's always going to be that same tone of, I don't want you to keep falling back into something of where you want to keep moving forward. Living an alcohol-free life is going to keep you moving forward in this lifetime. It really will, because you're going to start to just continue, and you already probably are, as just like banging your head up against a wall and being like, why do I keep getting stuck in this cycle? Why do I keep getting stuck in this cycle? It's because you keep going back to it. And it's not your relationship with booze. It's not going to change until you just give it up for good. That is the one thing I can tell you in these 11 years of not drinking alcohol. My life has not gone backwards. 
it has continued to move forward. If I were to pick up alcohol again, you bet your fucking ass it's going to go backwards. And I don't even want to take that chance. I don't even want to take that chance. And then sometimes too, I feel because some people don't have these like big ass, you know, rock bottoms. Even though I had a lot of like big ass rock bottoms that didn't stop me from drinking. I It just that last time of losing fur pants and, you know, Matthew at the time saying what he said to me, it was like in that particular moment, I was fucking good and tired. I was exhausted. So if you need a couple more times of being good and tired, then that is what you need. And that is your, that is your path. But if this is for the person listening today where they're like, I'm having these thoughts, but I'm glad I listened to this podcast because she's right. This shit's never going to, it's not going to get any better if I go back to it. You're just going to get sucked in the fucking black hole of vodka. And what all comes from that, even if that's just what you waking up the next day with fucking anxiety and then eating poorly and not being able to do your workout and just feeling like a bag of dicks. That is what it's going to bring to you. And it's going to keep showing you that over and over and over again. It's a new day, same lesson. So that's my conclusion on part two of the dilemma of moderation drinking. And I just don't think it's for people listening to this podcast. I really don't. I really, truly don't. I hope this episode helped you. Also, two exciting news. I've decided to bring my live workshops back. So the first one is going to be September 27th, that is on a Wednesday, and it's going to be at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I'm going to be going live in the my Facebook group, my Sober Vibes Facebook group that is for women only, but I'm going to tell you this, if you are not on Facebook, because I understand, <laughs> I understand that platform is not for everybody, and they got off it many years ago, I don't blame you, I will record them, and I will email them back to you. So you can find the link in the show notes below and it will be under free live workshops, okay? So I will be emailing everything to you after the recording is done. I'll send it, the e- I'll send the recording to you like within a 24 hour time frame, and then you can just rewatch it or listen to it. So I'm gonna roll with that and see how those pan out here over the next couple, till the end of the year. So I'll definitely do them till the end of the year and see how that turnout is. And it will definitely be topics to help you along your sobriety journey. And I like to interact with people. So that's why I wanna do this live and get to, you know, know, know people who listen to the show. And if you just need added help, no shame in that. So again, you can find the link in the show notes under the free live workouts workshops. You can always reach out to me on Instagram at Sober Vibes and just DM me if you want the link and I will send it to you. Also too, if you live outside of the US and Canada, your book, if you pre-ordered Sober Vibes, A Guide to Thriving Within the first three months. It should be being shipped out to, I believe, by September 16th. Thank you so very much for being patient as you wait for that book. And if you have not ordered it yet, make sure to you visit the link in the show notes and grab yourself a copy today to help you in the first three months without alcohol or living without alcohol. Again, thank you all for supporting me by purchasing that book and just helping yourself because what I've said, that book, it's going to tailor your sobriety. It's going to help you understand more of you and what you want to do and how you should handle situations for yourself. And it's really that experience you can figure out. It's not, all right, well, this is what Courtney did, right? So, or it's not like this is what Bob did. It's all for you. And that is how everybody should be doing their own sobriety and recovery of what works best for you and not what you should be doing because, you know, Bob told you this is the way that helped him. Got it? All right. 
Also too, if you need any help in your, in your sobriety and coaching is for you, you can fill out the link in the show notes as well to apply for one-on-one coaching. Happy National Sober Day. Again, I'm proud of you. If Nobody's told you that today and, you know, make it another day sober. All right. Keep kicking ass, taking names and stay healthy out there.